Joining us this morning with the first reaction from the White House is National Economic Council Director Larry Kudlow. Larry, good morning. Good to have you back. Good morning. Thank you, Carl. Appreciate it. Uh, are wages the headline to you? Uh, wages in this number were very good. What do we got? 2.9% year on year plus 0.4. Yeah, I like that a lot. I also liked 201,000 non farm payrolls because of all the uh, skewed seasonal adjustments. Some people thought that number was going to be 50,000 lower, but it wasn't, and it shows the strength of the economy. Uh, on wages, Carl, can I just add something? You know, my pal Kevin Hassett of the CEA, he just put out a great report. When you, after tax, after inflation, after bonuses, after benefits, actually, what we might call real wages are rising 1.4 percent year on year. That's a big number. And let me add one other point here from the employment report today. Uh, average hourly earnings times hours worked, okay, it's a proxy for wage income, is 5 percent. And if you just take out, let's say, 2 percent inflation, that's plus 3. And I hate to throw all these numbers at you, but real disposable income, which I'll just call paychecks, fatter paychecks, plus 3%. The economic boom continues. It's the big story of 2018. Jobs, growth, wages, doesn't get much better, Nat. Larry, Jim, how are you? Good, Jimmy. How are you, buddy? I am good. Let's talk uh, tariffs and trade. Uh, we keep hearing, and I know you had in it, you were very close on uh, Europe and getting rid of tariffs. We had good news from Mexico, hopeful for good news from Canada. But, Larry, and I know you'll love this, I speak to so many CEOs, as you know, I am hearing CEOs who are saying, you know what, we don't need to manufacture a thing in China. And we think that China's going to cave anyway. Where are we with our trading partners after an incredibly strong job number? Uh, you're referring to China, Jimmy. Yeah, all of them. But China, I keep hearing CEOs, Larry, saying, you know what, our president really making it so we can move out of China. We don't need to manufacture in China. And that's going to cause China to come to the table and do what we want. Well, look, I wouldn't put it quite so definitively. We are still talking with China on a number of issues, as you know. Uh, those talks will continue to go on. We want lower barriers across the board, um, you know, zero tariffs, zero non-tariff barriers, zero subsidies, uh, stop the IP theft, uh, stop the technology transfer, allow Americans to own their own companies. Those have been our asks for many months, and so far those asks have not been satisfied. However, hope springs eternal. And um, discussions continue. We had a small contingent from China here, uh, what, two weeks ago or so. So we'll see. We'll see. This isn't, look, our view, the president's view, is not to destroy the Chinese economy. We're not trying to put them out of business. We're trying to get them to join the international trading nations world and be a citizen and abide by the rules for the first time in some 20 odd years. And if they lower their barriers and leave us to our technology innovation, you'll see a ton of American exports, which will shrink the trade deficit. That's the point. Lower barriers, open markets, quit stealing IP and technology. These things are not hard. So we're waiting to see if China will just say yes. Remember Nancy Reagan, Jimmy? She said just sure. say no to drugs, and she was right about that. How about China? Once in a while, just say yes to one of our asks so we can move this process forward. I yeah, love well, that, David. Yeah, thanks, Larry. It's David. Yeah, structural reform is perhaps tough for them. Back to Europe, though, on trade, Larry. You know, these reports that they were willing to get rid of all tariffs, was that true? And if it's true, why wouldn't we take that deal? Well, we might. I mean, look, President Juncker, President Trump, when they met here and had their bilateral, I don't know, a month ago or so, uh, they talked about abolishing tariffs and non-tariff barriers and so forth. And we will be continuing those negotiations. Ambassador Lighthizer is going to Brussels uh, this coming week uh, to meet with Cecilia Malgram. 
Uh, we'll probably, I'll probably see them at the United Nations meetings in a couple of weeks. We're very optimistic. There are a number of transactions on the board, um, things like soybeans, things like LNG, things like beef, um, perhaps things like military sales. There's a lot of things on the board, and I'd say the relationship uh, is growing between the U.S. and the EU. And I, I like the goodwill. I really like the goodwill. I talk to my counterpart. Uh, Bob Lighthizer talks to his. Um, perhaps President Trump will talk to Juncker again at the U.N. in New York. Uh, it's, it's moving steadily. Uh, it's an orderly process. And color me, color me um, mildly optimistic about that. Uh, Larry, today the Journal tries to talk about whether or not there's the possibility of confronting China with, the, as you've said in the past, a united front, get the NAFTA deal done, bring in the EU, maybe even bring in Japan, they argue, and then uh, deal with China as a group. that possible? Yes. I mean, you know, we, you and I have talked down through the months and months and months. Let's see. A trade coalition of the willing. Uh, EU would rather do business with the U.S. than it would with China. I think the same is true with Japan. I think the same is true with Mexico. We're moving forward on that. That's a diplomatic uh, issue, but I like it. I think the Chinese, you know, may find themselves more isolated if they don't come into the global process and if they don't uh, provide new information and begin to say yes to the asks of President Trump. President Trump continues to speak well about President Xi, but they've got to show some action. Uh, I'm not in a mood to bash anybody today. I'm a happy camper with all these numbers. By the way, can I just say, did I forget to say this? The biggest story in 2018, the biggest story in 2018 is an economic boom that virtually no one thought possible. Uh, let's see, the Atlanta Fed GDP now is uh, predicting, let's see, 4.4, 4 4.5, 4.6 for the third quarter after 4.2. The first half was 3.1. As we discussed, the wages are rising very, very well. Um, this is great stuff, and it's widespread. I don't know if you saw ISM manufacturing, boom. ISM yep. uh, services, boom. There's no let up to this. Consumer spending, we're probably emerging into a capital goods boom right now. Now, All really, right, well, Larry, come that's on. That's true. This is Cudlow, no, supply side, low business tax rates, <laughs> expensing, repatriation, uh, lower marginal tax rates for individuals and so forth. This is uh, the takeoff, uh, in our view, 3% plus growth. It may be 4% plus growth. That's the big story in 2018. I'm sorry, it's so hot here, I can't hardly Let's, talk. Uh, That's uh, the big Larry, story in 2018. Uh, all this other stuff right. is side ramp stuff. Uh, all right, uh, that was cut low. This is Kramer. Larry, you know I know stocks. Okay, they're Ch China, their market's down 18%. Our S&P's up 7%. Our Nasdaq's up 14%. We are strong enough to take it to them. When are you going to just say, listen, we are going to make them say yes instead of just being hopeful? It's our turn. <laughs> well, Jim, you know, in my old age, I'm becoming more diplomatic. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, oh, yeah, you got oh. the edge of me. Also, Zach, you and I are both growth guys. You and I are both stock market wealth guys. You and I, you and I want to help every single investor around the world. I think that's still fair for both of us. China has, I think, taken some missteps, and I don't think they've really joined the conversation with the kind of intensity I'd like. All I'll say is we're continuing to talk and things can get better. But yes, the, what are these stock markets telling you? China is moving lower in their economy. The U.S. is moving higher. Uh, we're the hottest place in the world. Investment is pouring into the U.S. Uh, the weakness in the Chinese currency is a function of people withdrawing their investment. The steadiness and strength of the dollar is a function of a coming investment here. All right. That tells you something. You're quite right. Markets don't lie. They're giving you the directional signals. I want this to be win win. But right now, all I can say is new policies from the Trump administration on taxes and regulation and business success and rewarding entrepreneurship, new policies are working. All right. It may be the greatest story never told. It may also be a growthier story. Mind you, Jimmy, 
growthier. We're still moving. More growth. I call it growthier. It's a Cudlow word, but it's already been reprinted in the Washington Post. Feel free to use it. Growthier. I think that's the story. Uh, and one final note, Larry. I mean, in a week where people are talking about whether or not Gary Cohn stole a piece of paper off the president's desk, have you done anything to try to work against the president's impulses, at least on trade? Are you kidding? I've spent, you know, including the campaign, I've spent the better part of, I don't know, two and a half years, almost three years, promoting, developing his pro-growth policies. I've devoted myself to it. I've worked with him. Uh, I am honored to be in this position in the White House to help him uh, and others of our team on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we may have our discussions uh, regarding trade and other matters. What's the best, most efficacious way to generate the kind of economic growth policies and solve the world trade imbalances? You know, trading system's broken. We've got to solve it. Would I work against him? That's just crazy. I saw a couple of publications say that I and some others here are responsible for that crazy editorial. That is just nuts. Nuts. Of course, I have nothing to do with this. I've been working my tail off for six months, and he's on the right track. You know, instead of these egotistical, <laughs> personalized vendettas against a president who himself is a patriotic American, instead of that, why don't we try to help him in his effort and crusade to make America stronger at home, to make America stronger abroad, to take reforms internationally on trade and elsewhere that will help everybody around the world for world peace and security? Why don't people try to help him instead of harm him, you know? Or why don't they come out of the woodwork and at least display some honesty and be quoted on the record so we could engage them in a decent discussion. I don't do personalities, you guys know that. If there's yep. a disagreement, then come out of the woodwork, put yourself on the record, and let's talk. Right now, they're taking pot shots at a president who, in my opinion, I mean, nothing's perfect in the world, including me, but in my view, in less than two years, he has changed our whole economic story. He's changed our whole international security story. He's draining the swamp, and he's taking measures that Americans love to see. And by the by, although I'm not a political guy, may have a bigger impact come November than you all think. So, no, I didn't write anything. I don't know about these stories. I can't, I don't know anything about that. I go to work every day, and Jimmy and Carl, let me, you, you know, I've said this to you before. These are long-held Cudlow views. We're operating pro-growth models, uh, free and fair trade models. Uh, I put my heart and soul into this for how many? I think I'm coming on to four decades. I come yep. down here every 35 years to try to put it back together. It is my honor. Let me say this, all right? It is my honor to serve President Trump on a daily basis to make this story better. And I'll say it again, folks, all right? 2018. These other stories are not the big deal. The big story in 2018 is an economic boom that most people thought impossible, but it is happening before our eyes. This argument has the added benefit of being factually true, and it's going stronger. The data show it's not letting up. It's not one time. It's going stronger. That's the key point. America is going to be stronger, more optimistic, and a happier country. And I hope the rest of the world takes note of what we're doing, because they could learn something from what we're doing. Larry, thank you for answering that question. Uh, we will see you next time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Larry Cudlow, Director of National Economic Council.